Hey there, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess, and I've been teaching elementary art for 22 years. And in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 things that you need to know before becoming an art teacher. If you are already an art teacher like me, I hope that you will stay tuned and comment down below with, what did I miss? What would you add? What do you agree or disagree with? The very first thing on the top of my list is, surprise, there is no manual with teaching art. Um, I'm in a lot of art teacher Facebook groups and there are just question after question after question from new art teachers because there's no resource that just covers it all and tells you exactly what to do, how to set up your room, what supplies to order, um, what lessons to teach on the first day, what routines to teach on the first day, what do kindergartners need to know in art? There are a million things that are gonna come up and it's not information that your district is going to directly give to you. In fact, in many districts, you might be one of the few art teachers that is there. In your building, you also might be alone. So you're kind of figuring this out as you go. Um, some districts will have a curriculum, of course, but there are many districts that do not. And you kind of have to look around and piece things together to make it work. We're lucky as art teachers that often we're given a lot of flexibility with our lessons but when you think about that like personally i teach seven different grade levels which means that you know i'm doing at any given time seven different projects and i've got four quarters that i'm teaching over the span of the year they may be doing i don't know 15 different projects in a year just for one grade level so it's a lot of choices um and there really isn't a guide that you can follow that tells you all the things because there's a lot. Classroom management and particularly behavior management is absolutely essential for teaching art. We get an idea of what it's like to be in school because we've all been students before and we played school as we were growing up. And it's just completely different when you were thrown into the real world of teaching. So any real life experiences you can get with working um, with a camp to see what students are really like, what attention spans are really like, so that you know what to expect going in and how to set your students up for success. So doing a lot of research, um, I personally have a lot of behavior management videos on my channel. I will link them in the description down below, but they're some of my most popular videos because it's something that our teachers are always working on. It's something that a lot of people struggle with because it's something you're not explicitly taught in school. Also, I think there's a nuance that you really need to find your own style of how you're going to run your art room. So taking some time to get experiences, working with students is going to be really beneficial to you, but also kind of researching what kind of different classroom management techniques and behavior management things would you like to set up in your art room someday. Your students are not all going to be like magical unicorn children that behave. So it's nice to think through what will I do? Um, so you don't end up in a situation where things are just out of control and you don't know what to do next. You want to be proactive and be thinking about, what will I do um, if a student doesn't listen? And it's good to come up with these things. And when you are student teaching or going and visiting someone um, in your area that's an art teacher, you can ask a real life art teacher these questions and get your answers so that you are more confident when you go in and you are teaching on your own. New art teachers definitely need to know about budgets and money. So how much money is the school district they're looking to work for? How much are they allocating per student? So how much is that art teacher getting to entertain and teach those children for a school year? Are you being asked to have $75 cover 700 students for an entire school year? Or do you have 7,000? Knowing how much art supplies cost in your area, how much an average you know art teacher has to spend would be important things to know going in so that you're not putting yourself in a situation where you are really feeling as though your program is underfunded because 
Well, when that happens, us being the sweet art teachers that we are, we want to start dipping into our own pockets and purchasing materials for our classrooms, which I think is something if you've never taught before, you probably find a little bit shocking because your friends that have other jobs, they don't buy things for their jobs. But guess what? Art teachers tend to buy some things for their classroom. My general rule of thumb is I really don't like to um, buy consumable materials. So I'm not buying like wiggly eyes or paper bags or things like that. I'm able to work that into my budget, but I'm someone that has a pretty generous budget. Um, things that you do have to purchase for your classroom that don't just magically appear in most situations are gonna be things you see around my room like containers. Those are things that I have invested into my classroom. I've also switched schools, I think about five times in my career. I've never once walked into a classroom with a stapler, pair of scissors for the teacher, pens for the teacher, like anything like that being available. So those are things that I would try to work into my order, but also know that you may be wanting to ask for those things as gifts before you become a teacher, you know, asking for a really nice stapler for Christmas or something so that you have those things going through. And also, you know, setting aside some money to decorate your classroom and set things up the way that you would like with the tools that you want to have, um, because that is something that may be shocking to new teachers. And it might be something that you want to ask your friends and family for help with. One definite perk about being a teacher is the blocks of time that we have away from school. Now, notice that I didn't say off because many teachers will spend their summer break, their winter break, their spring break training. They will be thinking and planning for school. They'll be procuring materials for school. They'll be making examples. All of that school stuff is always going to be on your mind if you are a teacher. Your whole life begins to revolve around the school year. And one of my favorite times of the school year and something I'm very thankful for is that every school year we get a fresh start. So the end of the school year, we clean up, we put things away, we start making plans for the next school year. We get the whole summer to think and reflect on what went well, what didn't go so well, what fun things we want to do the next school year. And then we come back refreshed and with excitement at the beginning of the school year and so do your students. And it's really fun to have that refresh and restart every year. And I feel like a lot of careers do not provide that. Being a teacher is a bit of an emotional roller coaster. Every school year has highs and lows. It has new challenges, unexpected twists and turns, and it's gonna keep you on your toes. What you need to be aware of is you've gotta have a really good support system because you're gonna need to vent about work, okay? You're, you're gonna cry sometimes about work, you're going to laugh about work. You're going to get angry and frustrated about things that happen at school, but you're going to love it. And it's going to be a wonderful and rewarding career that you will enjoy. If you are a perfectionist, this might not be the job for you. Art teachers make mistakes. That is how we learn. That is how we grow. We're trying new projects, new materials. We're trying things out with different grade levels. Some things are just going to be trial and error. So you can't be afraid to make mistakes. Mistakes are going to be how our brain grows stronger. So you've got to allow yourself to take some chances in your classroom and make those mistakes. What I think is really nice is you're not making the mistakes on a big stage. Most of the time, you're making the mistake behind a closed door. You're learning from it. You're able to move on. Um, we're able to teach, you know, the same lesson multiple times being specialists. For me, I have like three different first grade classes. So if I mess something up with the first one and I make a mistake, I've got a chance to get it right and to practice it before the next school year with my classes that come later on in the week. And that's a unique opportunity that our teachers can really take advantage of. I know for me, I once taught a lesson where I was teaching the kids that this was the sign for cat and the hat. And they were all signing cat and the hat. And it was so cute. And then I later learned that this is ketchup in sign language. I was supposed to be teaching them cat in the 
impact. Um, I also I can remember doing early on a lesson with ripping tissue paper and we're putting it on wax paper and there were these little construction paper frames of different shapes and then we would pour glue on it and it was keeping the kids occupied and it was working great. And then it took like an entire weekend to dry. And then Monday morning, I had to scrape them off of all of my tables. And my tables were stained like a bluish purplish color. So that's just two mistakes. I can think of many, many more. It's just part of the job. Before you become an art teacher, you need to be warned that you're going to be doing a whole lot more than teaching art. Many times the specialist art, music, PE within a school will have extra duties. So these could be things before school, like going out and doing the kiss and ride, having the students get out of the cars, um, helping them into the school. Could be something after school, like you have a list and you're checking off who gets on the bus. You might have duties during the day, like you're monitoring lunch duty. Okay, that's my least favorite duty I've ever had to do. Um, many schools also have the specialists do interventions. Um, so they would do some extra time where they are helping students, not in arts, but in math or reading or science or an area that has been identified. Also in our schools, uh, at least right now, 2024, um, there's not a lot of subs. So there are schools um, definitely where from day to day, the art teacher might get pulled during their planning time or, or even for the whole day that they are subbing in a classroom. So you really need to go into teaching knowing that that is just sort of part of the gig. Um, there are gonna be extra things that are asked of you. There's also extra events. So there might be school events during the evening that you have to take part in. I know for me just this week, on the weekend, we had a multicultural fair. We did a basket weaving activity that didn't just magically appear. I had people helping me, but I spent more than two and a half hours prepping the materials. That's not even figuring out the project, ordering it, making a little video to teach my helpers what to do. It was a lot, okay? Then we had to come in about 45 minutes before the event started, soak the reeds so that they were soft so that we could begin the weaving project. The event was about three hours long and it took us like a half hour, even with help, to clean up. This week on Thursday night, I have my district art show. So we have a pyramid show that's at our high school. So that is an event that I had to choose the artwork for. I had to create the certificate. I had to hang up the artwork. That was all outside of things that I could get done during the school day. And I'm expected to go and be at that event for two hours on Thursday night. So just be aware with your schedule, making sure that all of that fits. Um, there isn't a ton of planning time for our teachers to get things done. And I think our career and our job really, really needs more of that. Um, there is so much organization and there is so many different lessons uh, and things that you're trying to do for your students that it would be nice to have more time, but just know the way that schools are set up, you're going to be pulled likely into some different areas other than what you want to be doing, which is teaching art. To be a successful art teacher, I truly believe that you need to be organized. Yes, organized looks a little different than it does in other classrooms, but you want to have systems together so that you are not losing artwork so that you can find the materials that you need for lessons so that your materials are not broken and misused by your students. I, growing up, was not an organized person at all. I was really messy. As I became a teacher and as I grew as an art teacher, I realized that being organized made my job a lot easier and that if I set up things of this is how we keep the scissors and this is how we keep the erasers and I taught that organization to my students, they better respected our materials and also cared for them, which took a little bit off of my plate. Teaching art takes a really big time commitment to do well. Um, it's impossible I think, to get your job done as an art teacher during the school day. So you'll have contracted hours of a time that you need to be here. For me, I think, I think it's 8.05 for teachers. 
and I think that we can leave at 3.30. There's no way I could get everything done in that time period. Um, many days I will see five different classes, that's five different grade levels. Um, sometimes they're doing five different projects. Um, and that could be that, let's say we're all painting. So at the end of the day, there is 125 pieces of artwork on the drying rack that are gonna be drying overnight that need to be taken off by me in the morning for the next classes to start putting things on. There could potentially be 125 uh, paintbrushes in the sink. Every time you have classes come through, there's things you need to prepare for them and there might be things you need to put away after they leave, even if you're teaching your students to be independent. Um, I personally teach K through six, so that's also seven different lesson plans. Um, and that means, you know, I'm coming up with examples for that. I often will even make videos for my students to show them the steps. I'm getting the materials organized for the students. I'm counting things out to make sure that it's enough. Um, I think it takes a lot of time when you're starting out as a new teacher to decide what projects are you gonna do with what grade levels, like what skills do they have? What do you need to prep for students ahead of time to make them successful? But what's like doing too much for the students? Um, because you want it to look nice at the end. So I think that's always a bit of a challenge. It's also tough to know what is an art project and an art challenge and what is more like a crafty classroom craft that doesn't belong in the art room. And I think that's a lot of trial and error. I think setting up and getting your room to function, how you wanna keep the erasers and how you wanna keep your oil pastels organized, that's gonna evolve and change over time. Um, extra projects like organizing or art shows or Oh my goodness, I don't know. I, I wanna do a new lesson that I've never done before. I, I really can't get that stuff done during the contracted school time. Um, for me, um, I think that my contracted time starts at 8.05, I come before then. So I'm always here by 7.45. And then I have about an hour before my first class arrives. And I'm doing things like I'm unloading the kiln. I am making sure that the brushes that I washed from the night before are put away. I'm getting out my grade books for that class for that day. I'm making sure that I have all my handouts and things copied and ready for students. I'm pulling out artwork from the previous week. It's a lot for an hour. I really have to, I use Google um, Keep and I will have a list of exactly like what I'm gonna do and I am busy for that entire hour. I will run to the bathroom. I will come back and I usually teach about four classes in a row after that at the end of this school day. So I'll have another class, you know, after lunch. But um, at the end of the school day, we are allowed to leave, I think, at like 3.30, 3.35. I don't know because I've never been able to leave then. On a really good day, and I've been teaching for 22 years, I would say that I need an hour after school to kind of clean things up and regroup. And some of that is you're just going to need to, like, the, you're going to have to. You're just going to have to, like, physically and mentally, like, chill out a little bit. But then you're going to get a second wind and you're going to want to do things and make things nice around your classroom and have things set up to make your job run easier the next day. So that's a normal day for me. Coming, what do we say, like 15, 20 minutes earlier than the contract time and then staying about an hour after. That's most days. Um, Mondays and Fridays, I tend to stay even longer. Um, I just have some days where I sort of play catch up uh, and get things done. If you are hanging displays, um, grading, if you're in a district where you have to grade artwork, it's also really hard to get that stuff done during the school day. I will work on projects throughout the day when my students are here, but realistically, it's just a lot. Um, so you have to decide, you know, can you make that kind of a time commitment? Are you okay with bringing things home? And it's tough. Like you will work really, really hard when you're here if you only want to stay for a certain amount of time after school. So make sure that you have a little bit of time, you have a little flexibility to dedicate to this career, especially when you're starting out and still finding your way. I'm not gonna lie, being an art teacher can be very isolating. 
I'm personally very introverted, so it's not an aspect of the job that bothers me. I do have a part-time art teacher, but they're only here one day a week. And when they're here, we don't have any common time. We both have a pretty busy full schedule that day. So it's really hard to connect. Even if you are in a situation where you are with another art teacher, there's no guarantee that you're going to line up and connect on all issues. And you're going to be braiding each other's hair and become best friends. So that can be frustrating. The natural team that sort of like, you know, family at school that sort of is formed for you is the music, the PE, if you have like technology or library or a language class. That tends to be your crew um, at our school we call the specialist. Now, many things you will have in common with those people and it's nice to bond with them and to have each other's backs because you teach the same students in the same school, you've got some of the same things you need to vent about and frustrations and you can keep each other up to date on things that are changing uh, throughout the school year. But there's a lot of things that you will notice as you become friends with these people that are just different about their jobs. One of the big things is the mess. Um, my level of mess and like workload, I feel like is physical workload is a lot more than if you taught PE and at the end of the lesson, you're saying everybody throw the balls in the bin or you teach music and you're collecting the sheet music and telling the kids to put the recorders into their cases. Um, you know, at the end of a painting lesson, we might be wiping off the floor because we spilt water and having to put the water cups back and wash the paint brushes and, you know, move our things to the drying rack. And then I have to take the artwork and sort it once it's dry and put it in a folder and save it for next week and check that the paint brushes are clean. And there could be a lot more to what we're doing. Um, and we don't just do painting, you know, there's printmaking, there's clay, there's a lot of mess going on. Um, there's a lot of chances for disorganization because we have so many more things that the students are creating and leaving with us. When when they leave, they're leaving their artwork often. And then we have to create it. We have to display it. Um, you know, we are saving it and getting um, set aside for the next week. Library has things a little bit similar that, you know, they have, you know, 100 students in a day and then 100 books come back from those students and then they have to deal with that. So they're having to shuffle things around as well. There's challenges to all the different jobs of a specialist, but just know that being an art teacher, it's going to feel a little bit like you're alone um, in that, that you don't have those people that understand that you need the time, you need that planning time to organize and get things done. And that sometimes you have to stay after school and sometimes you just have to come in early because there's things that you want to get done for your students and it takes a little bit more time than things that happen in the other specials. One of the reasons why, big reason why I created this YouTube channel for our teachers is to help you feel less alone in this crazy career. I have over 150 art room management videos to help make your job easier. I hope that you'll watch this video 